an inmate sprays officers with feces and urine. An inmate beats an officer up and calls two witnesses as backup. Here are the worst prisons on Locked Up Raw. Some meet the challenge better than others. Inside one of the jail's high security units, inmate Paul Dixon is having a difficult time. Paul. Nobody's hurt. You just put your hands through so we get you out of here. Dixon is naked in what is known as a single person special management cell. He was placed there earlier in the day due to erratic behavior. His clothes were replaced with a tear proof gown to prevent self injury or suicide. Put your gown on. Originally, he was in a mental health housing unit and was medically cleared through a psychiatrist. And um, he was put in their general population. He lasted about 10 minutes. He was flipping out. Brought him back to medical. They placed him on special management. Put your hands through. Nobody's hurting you. Paul, put the gun on him. Some say the location of jail determines how bad the inmates will be. It is believed that prisoners in poor and populated cities are likely to have the worst inmates. Although that might sound believable, it is certain that every prison has bad inmates. Paul Dixon is clearly causing trouble in prison. His screams are extremely irritating, and were he not locked in, he would have been thoroughly beaten up by the other inmates. Paul, I'm trying to make it easy. You're not gonna get hurt! Sergeant Turi has decided to remove Dixon from his cell and place him in a restraint chair so he can be safely evaluated by medical staff. Lift up, Sergeant John. Well, relax. For legal reasons, jail policy is to videotape incidents such as this one. Nobody's hurting you. Listen, nobody's hurting you, OK? Relax. Grab him, John. I got his gloves on. Right take intake. Go ahead, go right there. Dixon is back in jail on a parole violation. He had been sentenced to 101 days for third degree theft. He's had prior convictions for theft as well. Please don't me hurt me. You have to put him in the restraint chair until he calms down, gets evaluated once again by the medical staff, and then we'll take it from there. Paul, nobody's hurt you. <laughs> there is nothing as difficult as dealing with inmates who have mental issues. This is where correctional officers get their accolades. It is a very complex situation. Leaving them in the psychiatric ward means exposing other psychiatric patients to danger. And leaving them in the prison creates problems in the cell. Sergeant Turi's patience is running out. We're here to help you, all right? Relax. <laughs> I'm not the bad guy. Look at me. Look at me. Nurse is going to come in, check you out. Everything's going to be fine. Relax, relax. It's for the safety of himself, staff, the institution. So it's basically a cooling off period, supervised by custody staff, medical, checks him out. Yes. Roughly an hour later, the officers return. Dixon has calmed down, and they feel he's now ready to be moved back to his special management cell. You've done your time in the chair? We're gonna take you out of the chair, we're gonna bring you to South Warren. I wanna stay in the chair. Well, it's not what you want. It's not, you don't get what you want. This is, you know, you can't stay in the chair. We have to- I can't be in that room, I'm claustrophobic. I feel crazy in there, I can't be. What's gonna happen if you go in the room? If you put me, if you put me in medical, no, you're not going. In the suit, I will, I will say a word. I will... Now, we can't tell whether Dixon is acting up or is, in fact, having a hard time in a cell. Dixon does not even have a long time to spend in jail. The officers have to figure out a way to keep Dixon safe from himself and also from everyone else. Jail is a different place entirely. No one cares about anyone. And if Dixon is left alone, he would be prey. See, please, I'm scared of that room. It's so small. It's, maybe it's the same size room. That's the thing I can't. You have a window where you can see the outside. In medical, you it's have no so window. Small. Dixon continues begging to be housed elsewhere, but after several minutes of coaxing, he agrees to return to his cell. Well, like I said, you'll see mental health tomorrow. Dixon might be the first inmate ever to prefer a restraint chair to a cell room. What could be chasing him away from the cell? Dixon might be having a breakdown because he has never been to jail before. The room seems to be driving him crazy, and we understand. The room is always like a cubicle. No one wants to be trapped in there for months. In a nearby cell is Edwin Estrada. 
a friend Dixon met during prior stays here. Estrada says he didn't know Dixon was on the unit until he was awakened by his anguished cries. I hopped off the bunk and I, my port was open, so I looked and, and I couldn't really see his face, but I remembered his voice. I'm like, yo, that's Paul Dixon. I know him. Estrada was surprised that Dixon, who's been to jail numerous times before, was so distressed. I'm not saying he was faking or anything like that, but sometimes you really do stress out in here. There's people that are not built for this. Estrada is going through some stress of his own. Several weeks earlier, he pled guilty to aggravated manslaughter for killing an 88-year-old World War II veteran. The victim, who lived alone and was killed in his home, was described by his family as a vibrant and active great-grandfather. Paul Estrada cannot tell whether Dixon is faking his reaction. But wait a minute, why is Dixon acting like it's his first time in jail? If he has been in and out of jail several times, he should be used to it already then. I really don't want to like go to hell for what happened. You know, I'm really afraid, you know, I don't want to spend the rest of the eternity in hell. What had happened was I was smoking angel dust and I had ended up in uh, one of my friend's grandfather's house. Angel dust is like, gets you really paranoid and I just went crazy, like I lost my mind. I went into the, the kitchen and I had grabbed the pan. They hit him, I think twice or three times. The velocity of it was so fast, it was so hard, that um, the pot in itself was bent. It was bent in. I heard him yell, turned around, and I, and I started running. And I remember the only thing I, like, I really do vividly remember was me grabbing like the wallet that he had left on the table. Everyone seems to be battling with their own demons in prison. Estrada clearly has bigger problems than Dixon. Killing a war veteran is no joke in America. And Estrada has gotten himself into a deep mess. At least, he is sober about it. It's too bad that he is likely to spend all his vibrant years in jail. Well, this is the kind of situation that gets someone in distress. Six days after the attack, Estrada was arrested when he attempted to use one of the victim's credit cards. The man regained consciousness, but died 11 days later in the hospital. He was able to tell authorities that he was sitting on his couch watching TV and was attacked from behind. Estrada was originally charged with first-degree murder. In a deal with prosecutors, he pled down to aggravated manslaughter and was sentenced to 27 years in prison. But then his case took an unusual turn. Estrada's deal was approved by a judge who was sitting in for the presiding judge while she was on vacation. When the presiding judge returned, she overturned the deal. She was swayed by complaints from some of the victim's family members that 27 years was too light a sentence for such a brutal crime. The judge, she's more towards the family. And I understand you have to be sympathetic towards the family. They had stated that I was a monster, that I would go out there and kill somebody again. Estrada definitely has no luck. Having such a mild judgment as he has turned down is devastating. We definitely don't know his intentions, and we can't vouch for him. But if he is charged with murder, he might then be a lifelong citizen of the prison. If he did not intend to kill the man or harm the man, why then did he go ahead and take his credit card, and even attempt to use it? And that is his friend's great-grandfather. Estrada will soon return to court to find out if the judge is open to a new plea deal, or will make him stand trial for murder, a crime punishable by life in prison. The judge, she just wants me to do life. If he goes to trial, I'm screwed. Coming up. Islam teaches about paradise. That sounds good. Right now, it sounds good. Edwin Estrada seeks a new religion and a talented artist with a gruesome past. When I finish to go, I says, what are I going to do now? Estrada is hoping for the beta while expecting the worst. He has already examined the possibility of life in prison, and he has chosen a new religion as his form of therapy. Playing cards at the table, I say something out of my mouth, you say something back, now we both at each other's throat, we're gonna kill each other. And one faction, the Aryan Brotherhood, has been getting special attention. Extortions, attacks on inmates, and attacks on staff carried out by a group considered a security threat by the system. With members like William Sams. I'm an Aryan God, man. They'll never break me. My spirit's too strong, man. Let these dudes break me, because that's what they want. A whole bunch of zombies to walk around here scared to death of them. 
I'll never, you know, it's not, it's not having me fear no man but myself. That's who I fear, myself. Prison is no joke. It is a different life altogether, and the rules of the outside world do not apply to it. In prison, anything can happen to anyone who fails to watch their back, and also who watch their backs. Of course, the correctional officers are not even exempted from the tension in prison. There are just prisoners who have dedicated their time to make prison the living hell. They can operate alone or in groups like the Aryan Brothers, which is even more dangerous. Sam's, aka Bulldog is on his way to a segregation unit, already crowded with recent troublemakers. Gave me assault on a police officer. Bulldog got into an argument with an officer that escalated into an assault. We get in there and he's like, uh, he's barking. When a tells you to do something, you do it. I'm sick of you skinhead. And I said, well, that's good. And he said, what? I said, cause I'm not a skinhead, you know? And and he got, I guess he got a little mad. And before you know what's happening, it's, it's too late, man. Do what you gotta do, because I'm gonna do what I gotta do. And I'm gonna stand on these two feet, man. Regardless of where I'm at or who it's against, you disrespect me and you put your hands on me. And there's no more, there's no more boundaries, dude. I'm not Jesus. Jesus turned the other cheek. I'm, you know what I mean? No, not Bulldog, bro. You hit me, I'm gonna tear your ass up. Just like on the street, the Ohio prison system has laws, rules of conduct that can't be broken. And if Bulldog is found guilty of these new charges, he'll earn a trip to the jail within the prison system, known simply as Lucasville. The reputation of Lucasville, it's dangerous. Some inmates get to prison, chill out, serve their term, and get back to the real world, but some do everything except chill out. William Sims is very paranoid and has committed one of the worst offenses any inmate can do. Assaulting an officer is just being on the officer's blacklist. Williams is not even sober. Well, if the officer hit him first, then that's not right, but Williams retaliated more than he should have. They're just hardcore inmates. If you stabbed or killed in these other places or done something real serious, that's where everybody goes to. It's like a zoo, man, for real. That's exactly what the it's like. You see the animals caged at the zoo, that's exactly what the hell it is. Some guys being back there, man, for years, they, they go loony, man. Most of the people there is never getting out. Never getting out. So what the hell do they care about killing you? I mean, it don't mean nothing to them. The Southern Ohio Correctional Facility opened in 1972, a pattern of modules formed into a shape that resembles a telephone pole. Each module, J block, K, and L, connects to the main corridor. 22 acres under one roof, housing 1,450 inmates who've earned their ride here. Every inmate has broken the rules. Many have even committed new crimes behind bars. It's a fact of life in Ohio's toughest prison. One that keeps Major David Warren on the move. When I was just in there fighting, dude, uh, all I know is that I got hit from the side, and all I'm saying is that it either was a CO or another inmate. Why am I going to the hole? If I feel like I got to do something to somebody to hurt them or something like that, I'm going to let it be known so when the do take place, they already aware that it was going to happen. See what I'm saying, Major? I, 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 I understand, Ray. It's just something about the mentality of the inmate that comes into Lucasville. They, they feel like they have to earn a reputation or something. You're getting, getting individuals that 
or at the low point of their behavior. They're most frustrated, hostile. I don't understand how you guys can justify taking our privileges and giving privileges to guys that you're punishing. How do you do that? You're on the list. You'll get out of here as soon as I get a cell. This <laughs> is crazy, man. There's guys that have been back here in these four B blocks for I don't know how many years. You know, years plural, though. It's a nut house, man. Just when we thought that the general prison was nothing to write home about, the officers reveal the worst side of the jail. Lucasville is a world of its own, but no one dreams of being there. There are no laws here, and if there are, they are bound to be disobeyed. Literally, this is the den of the worst prisoners ever. You're locked down 23 hours of the day. You're here, you're stuck behind the goddamn, this, this little steel box. At Lucasville, any freedom of movement is exploited and the fights come hard and fast. The prison has more attacks on inmates and staff than any other facility in the state. 400 incidents and counting in 2010 alone. And some confrontations are extreme, like this one involving an inmate armed with a spray bottle filled with feces and urine. Allow me to do my job and my staff to do their job, okay? All right. And after any event, it's up to the major to follow up to make sure that the punishment is proper and everything is by the book. What's going on? Tell me. You had a spray bottle and, and, and you continued to try to spray my staff with feces and urine and you, you continued to refuse to cuff up so we had no alternative but to extract you at that point. You had every opportunity to come out, correct? Once they come in the cell, they shield. I ain't got no, I, I didn't even try to resist them. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't use force against them, they used force against me. What about the shampoo bottle you had full of feces and urine that you sprayed on my team? That, that did transpire. If Paul Dixon was mental for a slightly spacious cell with a window, then he might just collapse if he gets a cell in Lucasville. It really does look like a zoo. At Ross Correctional Institution, Bulldog is headed to prison court and a rules infraction board hearing. How do you wish to plead this rule for a violation? Not guilty. I'm never gonna plead guilty. They could catch me with it in my hand. Not guilty. I know the rules of the game, man. They got. Eight hours to catch me, I got 24 hours to beat him. You want to tell us about this kind of report, Sam? Yeah, I mean, just so, uh, I mean, I didn't touch him at all. So at no time you, you struck this officer? No, sir. They took pictures of my hands. They took pictures, you know what I mean, of him, I guess. I don't know, but I didn't touch that man at all. OK, well, I'm looking at the medical exam that uh, was done on him, and it's showing an abrasion to his facial area also. I mean, I didn't touch that man. These hearings play out daily throughout the prison system in Ohio. And just like in the civilian court, inmates call witnesses. Tiny says, uh, stand up, come with me. He starts screaming, he hit me, he hit me. And uh, and then uh, Tiny comes running up out the back. And uh, I look at Tiny, man, I ain't seen nothing wrong with Tiny. But under cross-examination, Bulldog's defense starts to crumble. <laughs> but actually, in no time, you seen that the incident happened. No, sir, I did not. I did not. Adam, Todd, Truby, 519-631. Could you tell us a little bit about this uh, conduct report, or if you know or witness anything? Um, I don't want to make any statements, please. One of my witnesses came in. He's a little You know what I mean? He's got no heart. I got no respect for dude no more. Whatever. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You stated that you didn't touch the officer. Uh, our rebuttal was we believe you did strike the officer. Bulldog is found guilty. It is a verdict that puts him one step closer to a transfer. One step closer to Lucasville and a radical change in the way he'll do time. William Sims is a very sneaky fellow. He believes he has cheated to escape extra crimes in prison. He even went as far as calling a witness. 